All right, this is fifth grade, module six, lesson 10. And in this lesson, we're going to continue comparing lines uh, generated by addition and multiplication rules. And what we're going to be doing is, uh, in this lesson, we're going to be helping our students identify patterns of, well, what happens when you have a rule that takes the x value and adds by six versus a rule that takes the x value and subtracts by one? How do those two lines compare? And then that's addition, uh, using addition rules and subtraction. Uh, what are we going to do with multiplication? If we have a line that takes the x value and multiplies by 3 versus taking a line that has the x value and multiplies by 1 half, what, how do those two lines compare? And we're really, this is the nature of mathematics, which is the study of patterns. So let's just embrace it. Let's have fun and let's get started. All right, so what makes this problem kind of tricky is we're being asked to do something in our homework that's a little bit different than what we were asked to do during the concept development in class. So it says we've got this line, and this is our x and y is equal line. So that's the y is equal to x line. And here we are supposed to construct a line d that is parallel to this line p. Uh, but it's got to go through D, all right? So that's kind of a new skill that we've never had to worry about. So it's got to be parallel, which means it's going to be just as slanted or just as steep as this line P. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And what we can see is this line P kind of just goes perfectly through the diagonals of our squares, right? You see that? And so we're going to need to do the same thing over here, and I'll do it in blue. And uh, so our line is going to go through D and at that same slanted rate right through the squares. All right, you see what I did there? So just like this black line is kind of going at diagonal, corner to corner for each square, that's what I did with my blue line. And then the question it asks us to identify three coordinates on this line. So let's take a look at that. So we're going to move over here, and I can identify some points. I could see that there's a point. Of course, D is a point. And then, oh, I don't know, let's do this point right here. So let's identify those points. And so I'm going to have to zoom out a little bit so that we can see. And now I can see that this point right here is at 1, 3. So I'll write that down. So that's at 1, 3. And then this point down here is at 2, 4. So I'll write that down. And then this point is at 2 and a half. Interesting, I didn't realize there were fractions. So 2 and a half, 4 and a half. All right, that's cool. So two and a half, four and a half. So what is our rule? It says to identify a rule. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at those coordinates. And what is our relationship each time? So I'm going to, oops, I wrote two and a fourth. That's supposed to be two and a half. There we go. All right, so I like to start with my whole numbers and use, do a lot of my hypothesizing with the whole numbers. And 2 and 4, well, it could be a multiplication because 2 times 2 is 4, but multiplying by 2 doesn't work here. That 1 times 2 is 2. But multiplying does work. You could say 1 times 3 is 3, but multiplying by 3 doesn't work over here. So it really looks like multiplication is not our pattern. So let's think about addition. Well, I can see that 1 plus 2 is 3, and look at that, 2 plus 2 is 4, and 2 and a half plus 2 is 4 and a half. So our rule is you take your, take your x value, add by 2, and that always gives you your y value. And then it says construct a line that is parallel to P, but goes through E. So let's move over and let's take a look at E. 
So here's our E, and it needs to be parallel to P. So it's going to look just like, like this guy over here, which, by the way, was D. And it's going to look like that, but down here. So I'll, let's get a thicker line there. And it's going to look like this. And then I'm going to go back down, and it's for each little square in our coordinate plane there, each little grid piece, it's corner to corner. And now we have, you'll notice, hey, we have three parallel lines, and I don't remember what l name they want us to give that line. Well, they want us to call it line E. All right, so that's line E. And we're supposed to identify three points on E, so I can just choose that one. Oh, let's choose this one, and let's choose this one. And so I can see that this point right here is 2, 1. And so let's do that. And so that's 2, 1. And then this point right here is 4, 3. So I'll label that 4, 3. And lastly, this one is 5, 3. Four. So I'll label it 5, 4. And now we want to identify a rule. So if we look at those points, hmm, how are they connected? How are they related? How is the x value related to the y value each time? Well, it looks to me you take the x value, you subtract by 1, and that gives you your y value. 5 take away 1 gives you 4. 4 take away 3 gives you I mean, take away 1 gives you 3. And then lastly, 2 take away 1 gives you 1. So there's your rule. Now, what's the, how do we compare and contrast? What are some things that we can see? Well, we see that they're parallel. And we see that when you add it by 2, it lifted it above P. But when you subtracted by 1, it brought it down below P. So there's some a lot of different options uh, for what students might say, parents and teachers. And then the last one is we want students to hypothesize. What if we had a rule that we want it to be parallel and it contains the point five and a half, whoa, five and a half, two. All right, so let's zoom over to our graph and let's go to five and a half. 2. So 5 and a half, 2. And let's do it in oh, funky purple. Okay, 5 and a half, 2. Well, here's 5 and a half, and here's 2. So that would go right there. Now, if we wanted uh, a line that was going to go through that point and yet still be parallel, we want our students to start thinking about what would that rule be that is parallel uh, but goes through this point here instead? Well, let's think. If your point is 5 and a half, 2, and what we've learned is everything seems to be with either addition or subtraction, so what is our rule? Well, if we wanted to, we can choose some other points on that line. So let's do that. Let's choose, oh, a point, let's see, right here. Let's choose a point, oh, how about right here? So here's our three points. So our points would be five and a half, two, because we already had that written down, because that's what they gave us. But then another point right here would be five and one and a half. Oh, my goodness. Five and one and a half. And then our last point that we included right here would be four and a half and one. Lots of fractions. Don't let that scare you. Four and a half, one. So what's our rule? How, how are these x values related to the y values every single time. Well, it's definitely less, so our rule is probably going to be x minus something. And we have to figure out what is that something.
And it looks to me, let's see, five and a half. If I started on a number line and I thought about this, well, here's five and a half, and I want to get down to two. So what do I need to do? Well, I need to subtract a half. That puts me to five. And I want to subtract three. That gets me down to two. So it looks like I'm going to subtract by three and a half. And that's what gives me y. And sure enough, if I take 5 and I subtract 3 and a half, that gives me 1 and a half. So there is my beautiful rule. Whew, that previous slide was a lot of talking. So this is the exact same concept, only this time it's going to involve multiplication. Now, how do I know that? Well, it starts by saying that this is our y equals x. y equals x because it says the x and y values are equal. So there is our y equals x. A lot of times we mathematicians, we like to think of that as our, our home line, our, our home graph. And then, oops, I didn't want to do that. There. Uh, then we're supposed to construct a line that goes through V and goes through the origin. So that's the key. So it's got to go through 0, 0, and it's got to go through this guy. So if I do that, our line, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So it's got to go through the origin, and it's got to go through V. So that's going to be a little on the tricky side for me to draw. But it's going to look like this. All right, so that is what it's going to look like. All right, and now I'm going to zoom out. It says name three points on that line. So what I'm going to do is I need to find three places on this line that perfectly cross through the hashes, hash marks, on both the x and the y axis. So definitely v is one of those points, right? So that's one point. So now I need to look in either direction of where this line perfectly crosses both hash marks. And I can see right here, it goes through the x and the y hash marks perfectly. So let's label that point. And if I wanted to keep going, I could see another one right here. Right there. So what are those three points? Well, the three points, if I zoom out a little bit, this point right here is at 2 and 4. This point here is at 1, 2, 3, 3 and 6. And this point here is at 4 and 8. So what's our rule? Well, it's not going to be an addition rule because it looks like the y value is always the x value doubled. So we're going to take that x, times it by 2, and that gives us our y value. All right, there's our rule. Now, I'm going to let you work your way through the rest of this um, worksheet. The idea is you're going to draw your line through W, and you're going to come up with your rule. It's going to involve multiplication, but because it's lower than this home line, it's going to involve a fraction, multiplying by a fraction, or you could think of it as division, and come up with your rule. And that wraps up really a tough one. This is a mouthful. That was 5th grade, Module 6, Lesson 10. We're comparing lines and patterns generated by rules. Some of them are multiplication and some of them are addition. And then we're hypothesizing about other rules. Really a good lesson.